Starship 25 and Super Heavy Booster 9 have completed all their pre-launch tests and are now ready for the second integrated flight test, pending regulatory approval. Last week Starship testing kicked off with two back-to-back -back fuel loading tests on Sunday, October 22. The first test on Sunday afternoon saw the methane and oxygen tanks of Booster 9 partially loaded with propellants before detanking. The test lasted for about 90 minutes. Test number two began within one hour of the conclusion of the first test. This time, the booster propellant tanks were filled slightly more than in the first test. Engine chill vents on Ship 25 were active during the second test, indicating that a small amount of propellant was loaded onto the ship as well. Engine chill is performed by allowing a small amount of propellant to flow through the engine to thermally condition its critical components, such as turbopumps, plumbing, and nozzle, before a massive amount of fuel is delivered for ignition. The vehicle was later detanked, concluding the second fuel load test that also lasted for about 90 minutes. Both fuel load tests on Sunday were practice tests for the actual wet dress rehearsal that followed. Immediately after detanking the integrated vehicle after the second fuel load test, SpaceX performed a water deluge system test. The system is designed to spray thousands of liters of water into the area directly below the rocket's engines to divert the exhaust plume away and protect the launch pad hardware and the launch vehicle from the extreme acoustic and thermal environment during liftoff. SpaceX conducted the first full pressure test of the deluge system on July 28. Since then, the deluge system has undergone several modifications, such as installing a new large water storage tank and several more high-pressure gas canisters to pressurize and force water through the steel plates beneath the launch mount. Last week's water discharge test was the first test conducted after the deluge system received those upgrades. You can see the difference in the amount of water discharge before and after the upgrades in this comparison video provided by LabPodRayspace. Water was released at a far greater height than it was during the July test due to the increased discharge pressure. Several booster engine compartment purge tests followed the water deluge test on October 22. According to SpaceX, the primary cause of the anomaly during the first integrated test flight was a propellant leak at the aft end of Super Heavy Booster 7, which resulted in a fire and damaged critical hardware of the launch vehicle. Booster 7 had a system to purge the engine bay with carbon dioxide gas before and during flight, expelling any gases that could possibly cause a fire to start. However, it became evident following the first flight test that it would need to be far more powerful in order to evacuate any hazardous gases quickly. So, SpaceX upgraded the system for Booster 9 by installing significantly larger CO2 tanks, increasing the purge system's capacity by almost 15 times that of Booster 7. Additionally, there are 18 new vents placed towards the top of the engine compartment to allow the constant flow of gases to be evacuated. The purge tests conducted last week ensured the system was operating as intended. On Tuesday morning, SpaceX started preparing for the integrated launch vehicle's wet dress rehearsal. The wet dress rehearsal is performed to simulate a launch day scenario. It involves fully loading propellants into the rocket, followed by a launch countdown rehearsal, except for the ignition of the rocket's engines. The test on Tuesday began by loading propellants into the booster. Propellant pumping into Ship 25 began when the methane and oxygen tanks of Booster 9 were partially loaded. A small leak was observed from the ship's quick disconnect arm plumbing during fuel loading, but that did not affect the test in any manner. In about 90 minutes, the ship and the booster were completely loaded with cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Venting was visible from the ship's nose cone indicating that the header tanks, which store propellants for landing maneuvers, were also filled during the test. The vehicle was held in the fully loaded state for several minutes, allowing controllers in the Starbase Mission Control Center to rehearse the launch day procedures, including the countdown and all system checks. Both Starship and booster engine chill were also conducted during the countdown rehearsal. A fire extinguisher and detonation suppression system test was conducted towards the end of the countdown. The FireX system is designed to purge the orbital launch mount with high-pressure nitrogen gas and water. This will clean and prevent the accumulation of any volatile mixtures of methane and oxygen underneath the launch mount before engine ignition. This system is implemented to prevent incidents such as the one that happened during the spin prime test of Booster 7 on July 11 last year. Usually, the FireX system is activated 10 seconds before engine ignition. So, it can be concluded that the countdown passed the T-10 second mark during the wet dress rehearsal. Both the ship and the booster were detanked later, concluding the wet dress rehearsal that lasted for more than six hours from start to finish. SpaceX later posted on X that the wet dress rehearsal was successfully concluded, and the integrated ship and booster were loaded with more than 10 million pounds of propellant during the test. 
The Booster 9 and Ship 25 wet dress rehearsal happened more than six months after the first wet dress rehearsal at Starbase, which featured Super Heavy Booster 7 and Starship 24. It took nearly 90 minutes to fully load the integrated vehicle during both tests, suggesting that SpaceX hasn't progressed in fuel loading time since the first test. The fuel loading time will decrease once all the recently installed heat exchangers and pumps at the tank farm are fully operational. On Thursday, October 26, Ship 25 was de-stacked from Booster 9 for final pre-launch preparations. Once SpaceX receives the launch license, the flight termination systems will be installed on both the ship and the booster, and then the ship will be restacked for the launch. It is difficult to guess a launch timeline given that SpaceX has yet to receive the final regulatory approval from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and the Fish and Wildlife Service. The authorities are currently undertaking a final safety review of the launch vehicle, as well as a review of the environmental impact of the latest upgrades to the Starbase launch site, especially the water deluge system. Fish and wildlife officials have been inspecting the area surrounding the Starbase launch site, along with SpaceX employees for the past week. They are mainly focused on the area surrounding the launch pad into which the water from the deluge system is discharged. Let's hope that all the inspections and investigations will be completed very soon and that SpaceX will receive the launch license without much delay. According to various sources, there is a good chance that the launch will take place in November, but we won't know for sure until we receive an official confirmation. A marine notice for rocket launch operations near Boca Chica Beach from November 6 has been published lately. Backup dates include each day following November 6 until conditions permit the launch. It is important to remember that the date is merely a placeholder for now and should not be treated as an actual launch date. When do you think the launch will happen? Let me know in the comments. Work on starships and super heavy boosters designated for future missions is progressing rapidly at the production site. Ships 28 and 29 are preparing for static fire tests next to the rocket garden. Ships 30 and 31 are being prepared for cryoproof tests inside the high bay. After completing the stacking of Ship 31 three weeks ago, the focus has now shifted to Ship 32. The common dome of Ship 32 was recently joined with the already stacked forward sections. The primary structure of Ship 32 will be completed after two more stacking operations. At the Massey test site, Booster 11 just finished two cryogenic proof tests. We discussed those tests in the last video. Fully stacked boosters 10 and 12 are inside the Mega Bay, and Booster 13 stacking operations are progressing beside them. Booster 10 has already completed four cryo-proof tests and will be ready for static fire testing after the engine installation. A fresh batch of Raptor engines was recently delivered to Starbase for installation in ships and boosters. Something unexpected happened recently during Raptor engine testing at SpaceX's McGregor facility. Sparks emerged from the engine exhaust during an engine test on a horizontal test stand last week. It's unclear if the sparks are a sign of a new testing procedure or an engine failure. The Starship 27's aft section was recently removed from the structural test cage at Massey's, indicating that it has completed its structural tests. The test tank was sent to the Massey's site last month to perform structural tests and validate the new upgrades implemented in the Starship's aft section. Apart from Ship 27's aft section, Test Tank 14 and Ship 24.2 are also stationed at Massey's for structural testing. Please check out my previous videos to learn about these test tanks in detail. Links in the description. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. The Indian Space Research Organization has carried out the first in a series of test flights ahead of its planned Gaganyaan mission to take astronauts into space. During the mission, dubbed Test Vehicle Demonstration 1, which took place on October 21st from Satish Dawin Space Center in Sriharikota, a liquid propellant single-stage test vehicle launched an unpressurized test version of the crew module into the sky to test its emergency escape system. The mission was similar to the Crew Dragon in-flight abort test that SpaceX conducted in 2020 to verify the Dragon spacecraft's ability to keep its crew safe in the case of an emergency. The test vehicle demonstration one payloads consisted of a crew module and a crew escape systems with their fast-acting solid motors, along with the fairing and interface adapters. The unpressurized crew module launched on the launch escape system test had the size and mass of an actual crew module that will eventually be used to take astronauts into orbit. 61 seconds after liftoff, at an altitude of 12 kilometers, the abort system activated as planned, and the crew escape system separated from the test vehicle, carrying the crew module along with it. The launch vehicle was traveling at 1,480 km per hour when the abort system activated. 
The crew module then separated from the escape system at an altitude of 17 kilometers while traveling at 550 kilometers per hour. Drogue parachutes were then deployed to slow the descent of the crew module, followed by the main parachutes at an altitude of 2.5 kilometers. The crew module then made a soft touchdown in the Bay of Bengal, around 10 kilometers off the Sriharikota coast, from where the test vehicle took off. The Indian Navy was positioned at the designated recovery site to retrieve the module, which was transported to a naval vessel and returned to shore. The test verified that the crew escape system motors can safely carry a crew away from the launch vehicle in an emergency, and the parachutes can safely bring them back home. India hopes to launch its first human spaceflight mission in 2025, following further tests that include three uncrewed orbital test flights of the crew module starting in 2024. A successful crewed mission would see the nation join Russia, the United States, and China as the only countries to have achieved independent human spaceflight capabilities. ISRO has plans for more exciting space missions in the future. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced plans for an Indian space station by 2035 and to send humans to the moon by 2040. China launched its crewed Shenzhou-17 mission to the Tiangong space station atop a Long March 2F rocket on October 26, marking the country's 12th human spaceflight mission and the fifth to Tiangong. Aboard our mission commander Tang Hongbo, who was on the first crewed mission to the space station in 2021, and crewmates and former fighter pilots Tang Shengji and Jiang Xinlin. The Shenzhou spacecraft carrying the crew members separated from the launch vehicle 10 minutes into the flight and began its journey towards the space station. Nearly six and a half hours after liftoff, the spacecraft completed an automated rendezvous and docking with Tiangong while orbiting at an altitude of 425 kilometers. Two hours later, the hatches were opened and the Shenzhou-17 astronauts entered the orbiting lab and joined the three-member Shenzhou-16 crew, who will return to Earth on October 31st. During their six-month-long mission, the Shenzhou-17 astronauts will conduct various on-orbit tests and experiments in multiple fields. They will also perform spacewalks to carry out maintenance on the station. China aims to keep Tiangong constantly occupied and operational in orbit for at least 10 years, though it could be extended to 15 years. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.